Welcome back to Mystery Woman Knowledge. I'm the spectral entity, Sam Beer, and with the host that summoned me, Tori Hirsch. What are we talking about today, Tori? I'm not quite sure what we're talking about today, but I know that it has to do with Atlantis, and I know that you keep talking, ooh, um, it's dog or something. Doggerland. Um, Doggerland is what we're talking about today. I'm excited to learn. So, Doggerland, because I don't think I told you what it is. I don't remember. No, I it's... think you've mentioned it really briefly once because we were talking about peninsulas from Valheim and you brought it up. It's good knowledge. <laughs> good knowledge for Valheim doesn't apply. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's good knowledge. Uh, Sorry. Doggerland is. Mm -hmm was i don't think it's still classified as is okay. but it's the it was a low-lying area of land that connected mm -hmm. great britain to europe so it was a peninsula of europe and how far under the sea now are we talking like is this very very deep or is this relatively shallow do you know um it was very shallow but okay since we're no longer like, the the time period that we're talking here is Mesolithic. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. That's when it went under, was 6500 to 6200 BC. Okay. Long time. But I thought it was really fucking interesting. Because, well, one, it was found, from what I read, from what I read it was found by, uh fishing vessels and then named after the type of fishing vessel which was called a dogger that's cool i wonder why it was called a dogger i don't remember it was it's like some like specialty like trenching uh, trenching is the wrong word but it's like some specialty sh uh like fishing vessel okay but they like i don't know how, i don't know what they found but i'm guessing they like threw nets down and, like, dredged up a bunch of, like, bones or something. I don't know what the fuck they found. Yeah. Um, but essentially, it spanned from the east coast of Great Britain to up near, if not right against, the Netherlands. So it was big as shit. And this oh, is a cool. big fucking area of land that's now yeah. just ocean. Um, but I thought the the... The history of it was really interesting because they essentially just like found um well they were like oh well the glacial ice caps melt the like great glacial lakes exploded into the ocean and stuff that's why it got buried but then they found evidence of like huge tsunamis oh cool that were it's that basically just took out the population of Doggerland. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, but what they assume the history of it was is it again, it was caused by the glacial ice melting, but there were so many other things happening during the Mesolithic period that were just like compounding on the like yeah. on just piling on top of it. That they're not really too sure what essentially took it out took it out mm -hmm. but another one of my special interests could be a factor and that's like agesis Ag agesis it's the huge ass uh ancient glacial lake in the i think it's up in canada mm -hmm. that overflowed twice so much that it increased the ocean level by like three meters i think or is it three feet but that's for another day but it's so fucking interesting no one fucking talks about it huge fucking lake bigger than the great lakes mm -hmm. but not deeper so i'm not too sure what the you know it had to be pretty fucking wide yeah anyway that outflowed twice so they're pretty sure that that on top of glacial melting made it from plains to islands so it went so it didn't like all go out at once okay do you know how long like 
throughout the span of time, like how long it took to go completely underwater? They're estimating three hundred years. They don't know. Wow. They don't know. Like the time period between it, like fully disappearing, is three hundred years, from what okay. I read. That's very cool. And there were people that were living there. There were uh, pre-humans. I don't know which version of humans it was, but there was like the people of Great Britain were living there, and the That's early so people, cool. the early peoples of Great Britain and Europe were living there. Yeah, I wonder how long. Um they stayed like if they stayed there until it was islands and then lived on the islands or if you know I like remember at what reading point they move away from that area. Watching I think I watched something a while ago that was um they like excavated a shoreline in Great Britain where the tsunami would have hit, like majorly. Yeah. And they found like bones, like people's bones on top of oceanic sediment. So they were living on the beach, and then they had, like, two, 20 seconds to see the tsunami. Because you're living, when you're living in Great Britain, you're not like, oh, I know what a tsunami looks like. Yeah! Oh my gosh. I That has never, ever crossed my mind, is thinking that, because, I mean, we have all the warning systems and stuff, but I've never thought about, if you didn't have that, you would just see it in the distance. And you can't run from it. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine what that would be like. But they were, I remember in this video, they were doing, like, speculative, like, what could possibly be going through your mind. Yeah. Because there were, like, huts and stuff, like, they found huts and stuff on pre-existing, like, where the beaches would have been. And there were, like, so obviously, there were, like, families and colonies and, like, civilization living on the shores of Great Britain, and then just, you wake, you wake up one day, or it's like the middle of the night, and you're sleeping, and it's like Pompeii, only there's yeah. not, like, ash mummification bodies. <laughs> but it's like, the versus here is you can, like, in Pompeii, you can see what happened, and, like, it hurt, like, it gets to you, because you can, like, still see their facial expressions sometimes. But here, yeah. it's just, like, early people were, like, asleep at night, like, one night, and then they were gone the next. Yeah. Um, but the, the interesting part about the tsunami, like, the glacial, like, ice caps melt, and ice caps form. Mm -hmm. But the interesting part was the tsunami, because this, the tsunami was from the Storga Slides, which come off, which came off the coast of Norway. And they were underwater landslides that basically acted as a, an earthquake. Oh my gosh. Focused solely at Doggerland, or the remaining islands of Doggerland. Wow. And you're saying it wasn't one massive tsunami, or was it a series of tsunamis Um, I think time? they... So they have found that there have been three Storga slides. Mm-hmm. It wasn't clear to me. I could have misread something. I could. It wasn't clear to me if like there were two previous Storga slides before like the Mesolithic period, and then there was a big one that took out Doggerland, or if there were three concurrent tsunamis that just washed away Doggerland. Okay. But there was three Storga slides, which means there were probably three tsunamis at some point from the Storga slides. Mm-hmm. But again, like, how unlucky, like, how strange that this humongous area of land, this humongous peninsula, that's basically Florida. Yeah. You know? And Florida gets hit by hurricanes constantly. Mm hmm And not to say that, like, like... Florida's disappearing, like, the wetlands are disappearing, and the swampy whatever areas are disappearing because of the hurricanes, among other things. Yeah. But how big does a tsunami have to be to wipe out a population yeah. and islands, you know? Oh my gosh. Just to put it in yeah. perspective. Like Was the... it, do you, sorry, do you know if the tsunami hit, um... 
before it was islands and then it was islands, or did it so take it, it as islands? From what I understand, it the rising glacial waters, the rising ocean, le ocean levels, and the lake overspilling and everything else that was happening during the Mesolithic period was rising the water levels enough so that they could, like, I'm not going to say calmly, but, like, mm. essentially calmly migrate to these islands. Yeah. Or Europe or Great Britain, which is essentially an island. And then live there and, like, survive there. But a gradual raising of the ocean level mm -hmm. or violent raising, I guess, if you... I don't know how dramatically the the when the lakes overspilled and stuff yeah how that affected like how quickly that affects a water level but if you take just like oh we're losing land over the course of like generations versus oh we lost land over the course of like a day mm -hmm. you know jeez but this is like mm -hmm. The area that they first discovered Doggerland in is that area between Great Britain and Europe. Mm -hmm. Like that waterway. Okay. So that was all islands. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. But it just, it's like amazing to me that we could have lost i mean it's the same thing with that continent that they just found under new zealand like mm -hmm. totally gone and no one noticed it until well no one noticed new zealand's big continent until like a couple months ago but they've been they've been lost for thousands of years like literally thousands of years Mm -hmm. It's wild to me. That's crazy. Yeah. And that it can happen, like, at any time. I mean, we have predictors now and stuff for mm -hmm. certain areas, but no one expects a giant underwater landslide yeah. to take out an entire population, an entire island chain, a peninsula. What was the continent that they found under New Zealand? I don't remember what it's called, but it's basically just like um, New Zealand was like a plateau on a bigger continent that I think connects up into like the other continents. I'm not too sure. I didn't really look into that one, but it it has it's just New Zealand but bigger. So cool. I think it connects to Australia too. Oh, okay. But I wouldn't quote me on that one. Mm -hmm. But that's just like that just fed into my like Atlantis uh theory that I have in my mind that like anything could have happened to Atlantis. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is the main reason I wanted to talk about Doggerland, because Doggerland itself is not that interesting to, like, it's filmed 13 minutes. Woohoo. <laughs> but, I don't know, it's so, like, Atlantis itself, people are like, it could be aliens, it could be, <coughs> it could be anything. I think it was just a fucking island. <laughs> 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 There's no way it was aliens. <laughs> it could have been anything. Mm -hmm. As someone who believes in aliens, it could have been anything. But it was probably an island. It could have been in like I don't. I'm not a, like a volcano scientist man, but it could have been just like a small volcano that like exploded. Yeah. It could have been a little island that got t taken out by a tsunami or a, a big wave or thousands of big waves that's called erosion for the ladies at home <laughs> like it could have been fucking anything it could have been an earthquake but they've found 
Oh, you also have to take in the fact that everything that the Greeks and the Romans had history-wise or mythology-wise or legend-wise was absolutely taken from the peoples of Africa. So Atlantis could have fucking been on, like, a, like an island of Africa. Yeah. And they could have just been like, oh, I saw it with my own eyes. You didn't. You're a liar who knows how to write. On paper. Or whatever they write on. You know, what I, but you know what I mean? Like, you can laugh. Let's go ahead and laugh louder for the audience. <laughs> but it's just like... <laughs> it's just like... You have to take in so much, like, bullshit. And then also science. Yeah. Because they've found ancient Greek and Roman ruins under the water where beaches would have been. Mm -hmm. They found them on islands that were that are now submerged. They've found them everywhere. Yeah. You have to stop. People don't realize how big of an ocean rise that we've had since like the beginning of humanity. Mm -mm. Anyone can be out here building stone bullshit. Is it buried yeah. in waves, though? We'll never know. Mm -hmm. And they they found... I don't know what the fuck it is. It's off the coast of wherever the fuck. <laughs> Specific. It's off the... It's an island where they're... Like, they were even saying that it could have been, like, an Atlant the Atlantean society. It's a big-ish island, and it has what they've quoted as, like, obviously man-made like pathways or wharfs or something where it's like smooth ass stone lined up locked into place where a beach would have been at some point where they could pull in boats yeah that's what they said they found and i've seen pictures of it it's just like dark stone that's like locked into place with each other so cool where was that off one of the off the coast of... Fuck. I can't give you a fucking pinpoint. <laughs> it's, like, where the Greeks and the Romans would have been able to see all of them to see and been like, that's Atlantis. Oh, uh, okay. But they had so many islands like that. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is get, like, one egomaniac out there and they were full of those to be like, this is Atlantis. <laughs> I am the god Poseidon, give me a wife. It took us 17 minutes to attack the Greeks. <laughs> <laughs> then they deserve it. <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get there. Every episode, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. But, like, it just takes one egomaniac to be like, I am the god Poseidon, give me your wife. Yeah. And then, like, invent fireworks or some, or some shit. Like... <laughs> He lived on a fucking- they were an island. Of course, they had control of the waves. They were on, like, a good wave path. They had good currents. Say what you want, but... An initial theory of mine is that it was just an egomaniac pretending to be Poseidon. Yeah. And, like, taking people's wives. Mm -hmm. But it's obvious that they lived out there. So even if the Greeks didn't, Greeks or Romans didn't take Atlantis from Egyptians or any other African people, mm -hmm. and they really did see it, an island that either collapsed into the water or flew into the sky in a bright light. Yeah. Like, it could have been this island. That's what they're saying. Like, the other islands are documented more. Like, the yeah. other underwater previous land masses of yeah. the ancient Greek and Roman civilizations have been documented more on, like, maps and stuff, but Atlantis never was for some reason. Yeah, I think that's really interesting, though. I didn't realize that um, ancient Greek people would have looked out into the sea and seen a whole bunch of cities and things that were pretty much flooded over. Like, I didn't know they had access to seeing that all the time, and that makes sense that they would create a whole myth about it. Well, I mean, the whole... I think the myth itself comes from, like, where the fuck does Poseidon live? Hmm? As I think where it would have had to have started. Oh, cool. 
but maybe seeing because there's still civil there's the sentinel islands it's a civilization it's primitive but they have had no outside uh influence ever and if they have they've like killed people or chased them off the island mm-hmm. but they've survived since the beginning of their time thousands yeah. of years mm-hmm. but you have to wonder how did they get there yeah and it's just it's the same thing with was atlantis like a a sub society was it a society that came from somewhere else via boat and was like mm-hmm. i like this island and just knew better construction techniques than the greeks or the romans even though the romans had that really fucking good cement that good good cement oh my gosh we have to do an episode on roman architecture and their cement and their you can't do way. an episode on their cement because no one knows what the fuck it consists of it's the best cement on the planet tori <laughs> <laughs> I think they think it's like volcanic ash, like a very specific volcanic ash. I think is what they mm. they've decided it is. Oh, that's really cool. But it could have just been like, but like taking on the the theory that it that it's like an Egyptian island, like the Egyptians saw it and the Egyptians were like, "That's a cool island. Wonder who lives there? Probably a god." And then. Bitch boy Herodotus was like, yo, that's mine now. You know? Yeah. And then, like, shared the story via word of mouth instead of writing it down. And then whoever else was like, I'm gonna write that it's Poseidon. Yeah. And that he fled. (laughs) What? (laughs) (laughs) He ran away from us. Um, I think there's also ties to it in... Not necessarily Catholic religion, but along the lines of the Great Flood, like Moses. Oh, or I was someone... like, how are you connecting this right now? Okay. No, no, I'm not. I'm not connecting this. I'm connecting this to something that I've read before. But Dave, fuck, where did my line of thought go? I didn't write this in my I'm notes. Sorry. You were talking about the the flood and. Christianity. Oh, the Catholics have some weird, not the Catholics, but like the Bible, Old Testament, like one of like the big, one of the sub books of the big book Mm -hmm. has reference to something Atlantis looking. Oh, that's so cool. Is what I think I read before. And there's also like, you have to factor in that the flood was real. Because yeah. they've found geologic evidence of the flood, like, oh, across wow. the globe. And they've also found, wasn't, like, the, the the Bible thing about, like, a big fire or some shit? A big fire in the Bible. Um. That, like, was going to take out humanity? No, I don't remember anything like that. I don't remember. You went to Catholic school. I'm, de- I'm depending on you. I could be crossing <laughs> some wires here. Yeah, I don't think the only thing that I know that's related to any religion and fire is um in Nordic religions they believe that the earth will end be in swallowed fire. in fire. Yeah. That's yeah. what it was. Okay. But they have like there's just several layers of like the deeper you go the more shit that you find. There's evidence that a bunch of stuff that happened that like the Bible's like big flood, they found it. Essentially what I'm talking about. So there was yeah. a big flood. Oh, wow. Fairly globally, if not globally. Cool. I don't know when it was. I'm not a geologist. But it happened. So you have to take, you have to just like, the more like backtracing and different cultures that you can connect to, the more it's like, did the Greeks really go, that's Atlantis? Mm-hmm. Or did someone else say, that's a cool island? And then someone was like, Atlantis. Yeah. Put it in our legends. <laughs> but I do think it existed. I 100% think it existed. And I don't think there's, like, any... It's just a matter of time to find it. Or if we never find it, it's like... 
I'm not saying we're gonna find, like, skyscrapers in the middle of the fucking ocean. Yeah. But it was, like, a advanced society for the time. They had yeah. paved roads, they had buildings that could withstand island torment, so there was, like, big waves, mm-hmm. a lot of boat travel. Yeah, I was they... just about to ask you, sorry to go off a little bit about Atlantis and what it was like, because my knowledge on Atlantis is really limited, because I just know that it was a story. <laughs> I just I know, know Stargate was... Atlantis was a show. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was an advanced society. It was for a Stargate review. <laughs> <laughs> this is all you taking longer than I thought. My Stargate alone. You leave my Stargate alone. Sure. It um it was absolutely an advanced society. They it was so advanced that they like if they had seen it with their own eyes, that they had claimed that Poseidon was literally like the president. Oh wow! And that the, if you bring aliens into it, like the alien theology into it, which I don't really want to, but they, they, people who were just like, well, the gods didn't exist, so it had to have been aliens. Like that's the equivalent. Yeah. Like the people that lived there were willingly taken from, willingly taken, willingly went from Greece or Rome or wherever, like, whatever the actual time period that it existed in, they went out, got on a boat, and they went over yeah. there to trade, and then they decided to stay. And Poseidon found his wife that way. Poseidon was like, I love my wife, TM. You know what I mean? And he uh, took her with him when Atlantis died, died off. Yeah. And if you reference aliens again, they, the two ways that it's written that it disappeared in all stories is that it either sunk or it went up into the air. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. And because it went up into the air, apparently, people will claim aliens. That's interesting. But I think that we should really start giving props to the building techniques of ancient cultures. Yeah. Because, like, as fun as it is for me to say, oh, aliens gave the Egyptians anti-gravity technology. Mm-hmm. You can't, you got to, they just moved big rocks. <laughs> <laughs> you have to give it to them. They knew how to move big rocks. That was the entire thing for a while, was moving big rocks. Mm-hmm. These dudes could calculate star paths with yeah. math. They knew math. What makes you think they can't move big rocks? Again, Roman cement? Mm-hmm. We can't make it. You can do all the chemical tests on it you want. We can't make it. These dudes know how to build shit. I love it when people think that ancient cultures and civilizations weren't like actively innovating <laughs> they just like because... lived they just lived in like hollowed out trees like yeah i no. I, I i feel like it's a lot of people nowadays because we've kind of reached a point in humanity and history where we're not innovating nearly as much as we have been and so i think that a lot of people think back to an ancient civilization and they're like what did they need to learn this for <laughs> it's like maybe they wanted to learn how to move a big rock yeah <laughs> <laughs> like the Egyptians the Egyptian pharaohs were literally like I want to do it better than my dad did it and yeah. then built a bigger rock pyramid <laughs> they had to at some point learn how to move the big rocks mm-hmm. a pharaoh said I like that rock from way over there and then mm-hmm. told his chief engineer get me them rocks mm-hmm. and if he was like no we don't know how to move them he'd be like chop chop <laughs> Or he'd chop his head off. Chop, chop. <laughs> it was like life or death. Mm-hmm. I don't... I, it's... What makes people assume that... Like, there are some ancient civilizations where I'm like, how the fuck did they do that? Yeah. But it's literally just an island. It's an island civilization. They could have built... People have built, ancient peoples have built societies out of cliff faces before. What makes you think that they can't take a dormant volcano, what they think is a dormant volcano, mm-hmm. and carve into it? It might have yeah. taken a while. Mm-hmm. 
to like chop slabs off of it and make like wharfs and and bridges and buildings. Yeah. But what makes you think that they couldn't just carve into a fucking volcano and then the volcano explodes mm-hmm. and takes out this giant society? Yeah. That's I think it's so much easier for people to just come up with conspiracy theories or say it was aliens because then in their mind like they do know the answer (laughs) you know what i mean yeah i mean i if we don't know how something was done it's so much easier for us just to be like i think aliens killed them god not to say that aliens like i'm a firm (laughs) believer that aliens exist and they come here to look at us because we're a neat little zoo society Mm -hmm. we're all packed up into one little planet but by God, they are not fucking giving us, they're not giving our ancestors ancient technologies to, like, lift big rock, make rock smooth. They had tools. Mm-hmm. The Greeks could do, they could make swords. Yeah. What makes you think they can't make pickaxes? <laughs> could you imagine when Alien comes down and they're like, you know what you would love? A smooth rock, wouldn't you? <laughs> and they're like, what, what are you talking about? Rock only pointing and hurt this. my feet. <laughs> How would you like a sword, but um, Core. it goes into the stones? <laughs> God. They'd be like, get out of here. We should be giving you shit. Screaming in terror. <laughs> the gods are here and they're threatening to give us smooth rocks. <laughs> no! <laughs> god! Oh my god. I don't get it. I don't. As someone who was hella, like, aliens had to have helped them, like, was in. I? in <laughs> In high school, when I, like, yeah. went through it in, like, ninth grade, uh-huh. I was like, aliens had to have helped. <laughs> yeah. Why? What if my brain was like, yo, they, aliens were here, they hate us now, but back then? Back then. <laughs> oh boy, did they love us enough to give us smooth rock. <laughs> no. It was... <laughs> Oh. Sorry, guys. I'm just referencing ancient Egypt again here. I know that this you started know. as a dogger land, how Atlantis formed, whatever. You know what, Sam? We have the freedom to do whatever we want. This is true! <laughs> this is mystery woman knowledge, and I have too much of it. Yeah. <laughs> They've even found broken fucking big rocks from the pyramids and, like, the mining sites. Would aliens yeah. be so fucking stupid? As to allow them to waste their technology on breaking rocks? <laughs> no! Let the boys gut get they rocks! Come get y'all rocks! <laughs> I love it. I love it. People think that aliens gave us knowledge like math. <laughs> it's like, how? How did they give us math? Math, the basis of we the universe. The stars. We knew where they were! We could place it accordingly <laughs> oh those those three vaguely in the line rock or stars rock jesus christ those what? three stars that make orion's belt up yo i bet we can put them on earth oh, it and they did <laughs> <laughs> people are like but they're exactly where they need to be. they're not they literally are not exactly where they need to be they are a little bit off <laughs> Which is such a human fucking thing. Human error, yeah. They didn't have an alien ship to be like, hey, can you take our architect, can you take our lead architect up there so he can, like, pinpoint exactly? <laughs> Thanks, dude. The people were like, <laughs> like, they didn't look into the sky. Like, every night they came outside and were like, what the hell is that? And then they <laughs> <ran back> inside. <gasps> <gasps> All of our gods who live in the stars, we must flee! <laughs> No! No! <laughs> God, the Egyptians were also smarter than the Greeks. Mm-hmm. Because the Greeks were like, big mountain, God live up there. If I go up there, I can't breathe. <laughs> no! Why would they live up there then? <laughs> I think that's really 
obvious, but with all of the ancient Egyptians, a lot of their gods were based on like sciences and innovation and intellect. Sea and crocodile must have god. <laughs> I agree. No, the Egyptians were my <laughs> people. Completely undermining my point no. with, with crocodile. But I think it was very obvious that once we moved to um, ancient Greece, they just took those ideas and they were like, let's oh my God. write some soap operas about them. And it wasn't, there wasn't any, like... Let's make the saddest gods that we possibly can. <laughs> yeah! Why? Yeah. Get a hobby that's not that one. We all perform really cool stories to each other, but most of them are tragedies. <laughs> but they're all songs. But they're all songs. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine Why? Someone comes over and sits down and tells a story. They start singing. I'd kill myself. I'd start swinging. <laughs> Tori, <laughs> anytime you tell me a story, you start singing. <laughs> Not the whole thing. <laughs> Just the parts that sound really good. But anyway. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I think just off of that te literally ten minute tangent. Oh no. Atlantis probably fucking existed. Mm -hmm. And I think people need to stop saying that it was Poseidon, but an alien Poseidon who took it into space. Mm -hmm. The Greeks were probably high as fuck always mm. on something like badly fermented wine. Mm. And saying that an island became a giant bright light and then flew into the sky is probably something they actually saw in a dream. And then we're like, yo, you'll never fucking believe what I saw last night. Like, that I won't. island You're... came straight out of the ground. That <laughs> island there, yeah. We're that right island that's right still there. there. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the sky now. No, it's not. <laughs> it's in the clouds. I no. know what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you passed out at two p.m. <laughs> you haven't been awake for eighteen hours. I don't believe a thing <laughs> that's coming out of your mouth. Like this. <laughs> What? Oh my god. He's laying there and he's like, well, <laughs> slurred all my words. <laughs> he's laying there and he's like, you know what else I did? I went there. And Poseidon came. <laughs> I marched around and I saw all this stuff. <laughs> god. Anytime I talk, like, out loud about ancient Greeks and Romans, yeah. I'm like, how? There had to have been some weird like overly translated text mm -hmm. from that took it from big storm came in island sunk poor Atlantis yeah. rest in peace mm -hmm. and then like fifty times over translation turned into Poseidon was struck by a thunderbolt and yeah. the island flew into the sky. <laughs> I think, well, that's what I was saying earlier, is if this had happened and the ancient Egyptians had witnessed it, they oh. would say something along the lines of, like, oh, the weather patterns, and we watched a big wave, and, you know, maybe a god had a hand in it. But I just think that the Greeks just like to add some spice. Because they had nothing else going on. They Greeks lived on fucking, like, they, lived on, they lived on the worst fucking coast in the history of coastlines. It was always either hot as shit there, or it was raining. And they had a big mountain that they were afraid of. What else could they do but go out into the ocean to not get bit by mosquitoes anymore? Find Egypt, yeah. and then the Egyptians were like, here is the Rosetta Stone. Mm -hmm. Let's make it. Let's translate these languages, boys. Yeah. And then at some point during like a bonfire or a celebration, someone was like, yeah, we used to have this island, but a big fucking storm came in and, like, fucked it up. Mm -hmm. With a lot of lightning. And the Greeks were like, <laughs> I love it. I need more of it. <laughs> Why was Poseidon even on this island? If he lived on top of the fucking mountain. That's just his summer home. Summer home mountain. Got it. Yeah. Summer home mountain. True kingdom, the ocean. It's 
40 minutes, by the way. I know. I know where we are. <laughs> I was just making sure. <laughs> Even though, I mean, I'd love to talk about this for another hour, but... I don't think I have anything else to say. I have given... <laughs> I referenced Stargate Atlantis. Yeah. And we had a very boring first 12 minutes where I talked no. about landslides. I thought that was interesting. I did, too. <laughs> That's why I talked about it. I went off on a tangent about how I truly distrust anything that comes out of an ancient Greek's mouth. Mm-hmm. Talked about aliens. It's You've good given episode. everything you have to this podcast. This episode had everything. But yeah, I don't know. Do you have any questions? Any comments? No, I don't think so. I think... <laughs> I don't even know what to ask. <laughs> no, I think this was a, a great episode. I learned a lot. And you want to know what? Mm-hmm. Dr. Land is genuinely interesting to learn about. And if... Mm-hmm. Honestly, you got some time. Pull up the old Wikipedias. Genuinely do some fucking reading on it. Because it's Absolutely. interesting as fuck. <laughs> it's interesting as fuck. How yeah. we can just lose entire land masses practically overnight. And we won't know about it for yeah. thousands of years. That is true. That is really cool. Especially when none of like the word of mouth stories, like, mm-hmm. they never wrote it down, so it had to have been word of mouth. Yeah. But it never got to us. Mm-hmm. Could have gotten to somebody, and it could have transformed again. Like the Greeks and the Egyptians could have transformed into something bigger. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting. Yeah, I think so too. It's really neat. And I'm sure well, this this the, any theory about Atlantis has been bounced around to to death. But yeah, interesting to talk about. Yeah, I think so too. This was really cool. Take us out, Tori. All right. Thank you so much for listening to Mystery Woman Knowledge. I hope that you learned about Doggerland and about. <laughs> ancient greeks and about aliens and about stargate <laughs> the list goes on and on Don't we're bring always stargate applying back tons of mystery women knowledge to you <laughs> thank you for tuning in <laughs>